Hi guys, thanks for clicking on the video. Today we've got footage of a real driving test. This footage is from the Red Hill Aerodrome in Surrey. And the candidate didn't like their name to be used, so we won't be using that. But we are going to use the footage to give you an idea of how a test might go in Red Hill. And to give you an idea of the sort of things you need to do and not do to be able to drive safely and legally. We were reverse parked in a space, and the candidate is in the car, the examiner is now in, and off we go. We're coming right out of the parking space, as there's a one-way system through this small bit of the car park. And as we come out of the car park, we're going to be turning left. And as we go left, let's be very mindful, there is a zebra crossing. And a zebra crossing, you must give way to pedestrians. So we need to make sure we slow and look both ways to check for any pedestrians coming up to the crossing. So, there's no one there at the moment. And it's worth noting, it's not just pedestrians waiting to cross, if there's anyone walking near the crossing, you need to slow down and be ready to stop just to make sure in case they do start to walk across. If you don't do that, you will fail your test. You need to give way to pedestrians as for crossings. At the end of the road, we're turning left. Now notice here is a stop sign. So a stop sign, guess what we need to do? We need to make sure we've stopped. The candidate is stopped a bit early here from the line. So we need to make sure we shunt forwards a bit and then re-stop at the stop line. That's much better there. Because the rule is, and the law is, you must stop at the stop line. And a metre from the stop line is not acceptable. As if you're a metre from the stop line, you still can't see properly at the junction. The stop line and stop sign will be there due to poor visibility at the junction. So you need to get up to the line and stop at the line, then assess the junction, and if it's safe, then pull out. So a bit of a hazard here, there's a van doing some works. So check our mirrors and start to slow. Be ready to stop for any oncoming traffic. It looks clear, so we steer round. Good positioning and speed choices on these bends. These roads are reasonably narrow, but not so narrow. We need to be going excessively slow. There is room for two vehicles, as there is a centre line there, giving you a good hint that there is room for two vehicles. And the bends can be quite sharp, but they're not all that sharp. So we don't want to be going 20 miles an hour down the whole road, but we don't want to be going 40 miles an hour down the whole road. We build speed when it's slightly straight like this, and the bends aren't very severe. But as we get to slightly sharper bends like this, then we slow our speed. It's all about driving at the appropriate speed. That could be 15 miles an hour, that could be 20, could be 30, could be 35, could be 40. And it will vary the whole time you're going down the road, depending on the situation, and depending on what bit of road you're on. It's worth noting the speed limit on this road is 40 miles per hour. But as we've said, 40 might not be achievable. It's not a target. You need to choose the appropriate speed, depending on the conditions on the road. Often choosing the appropriate speed is something a lot of candidates really struggle with. If you go too fast or too slow, and often people want it as a black and white rule. So it's 40, do 40, or no more than 30. But it likes it completely depends. You just need to keep practicing to get used to understanding when you can go faster and when you need to go slower, and getting used to what the appropriate speed is. So we've got T-junction coming up soon and we're turning right. Did you notice the speed limit sign there? There was a sign just now confirming a 30 mile hour speed limit. Watch back the video, it's on the right hand side. Good idea to come to a stop here, because this junction is very blind. So we have to edge out very slowly like the candidate does very well here. Being very ready to stop, if sign comes fast around the corner. But it looks clear to go, so off we go. So remember this is the 30 mile an hour road. There's no street lights yet, we just have to maybe spotted that 30 sign just a moment ago. Street lights will start as we come around the next corner and it becomes a bit more residential. So we can start to see some more houses now. So just expect any park vehicles, any pedestrians maybe more around here, around this more residential area. Got the oncoming vehicle. They seem to be stopped though, it's not causing a problem. All that's clear, just keep an eye on your speed, make sure you stay within 30. It is a bit downhill here, so don't let the car run away from you. Ease off the gas, potentially consider using the brake as well if needed. The candidate now gets asked to find a safe place to pull up on the left. So we're checking our mirrors, seeing what's around us, looking for a safe place. Should be safe somewhere along here. We're allowed to stop on the white line, no problem with that, it's not against the law. We're signal left though, because it's a bit of a busier road. Good choice of positions to stop here. Remember, if you're not allowed to park somewhere, it wouldn't be a white line you'd have, it'd be yellow lines. All the white line is, is an edge line. It just marks the edge of the carriageway if there's not a defined curb or it's a bit unclear where the curb will be. Just to help you to position when you're driving along. 
but no exceptions for parking. Park there, no problem. And of course, just before pulling away, the candidate has checked their mirrors and also checked their right-hand blind spot and also popped on the right indicator because there was some oncoming traffic there. As we come around the bend, we can see more water on the road. We're going to slow, check our middle and right mirror, and because it's safe to, we'll go a bit more into the centre of the lane to try and avoid the water. If there was an oncoming vehicle there, we would just slow a little bit more and go through the water. The water wasn't particularly deep there, so it's okay to go through it if you need to, if you're full speed by an oncoming vehicle. But best avoid it if it's clear of oncoming vehicles. So, still 30 mile an hour road here, so keep checking your speedometer and keep within the limit. Particularly easy to go over the limit here because it's quite a clear road at the moment. So, roundabout coming up, you'll see the road sign there. We're turning left. So, middle mirror, left mirror, left signal. And we start to slow on approach so we can scan the roundabout. We're not just looking to stop and then see what's happening. We're looking to plan on approach. And like we do well here, if possible, keep the car moving. Got a crossing. Crossing's clear. Lights are unlikely to change. If there's someone standing near the crossing, they probably press the button. So just ease off the gas a bit and be very ready to stop in case the light changes. Up some more traffic lights soon. In fact, traffic light controlled crossroads. And at the traffic lights, at the crossroads, we're going to be turning right. So we're going to check our middle and right mirror and just start to slow in a moment so we can work out where to position. So we're going to pop a right signal on now. Don't need to worry about this on the right because that's no entry, so that's not going to confuse someone if you signal too early there. And then when we stop here, good position here, just so we can see the tyres of the vehicle in front. That just enables us and after them to manoeuvre around, should the vehicle in front break down, or should the vehicle in front move and suddenly stop, perhaps they stall, then if we move we're not going to hit them. If we're too close and they move and then stop again, there's a high chance we could hit them. Happens quite a lot of traffic lights and on busy junctions. I think you have to be careful of when we're turning right at traffic lights, is if it's green, it doesn't necessarily mean just go. Often when you have green, you have to give way to the oncoming traffic. You need to look carefully at the type of light you have to make a decision. Now, if I have a look at our traffic light here, we have a, what's called a filter arrow, a green arrow, pointing right. That means we have priority over the oncoming traffic, and it's safe just to go. If that was a normal green light, a green circle, then we need to go into the middle of the junction and stop in the middle and give way to the oncoming traffic and when it's clear, then turn right. So, what's the speed limit now? Well, you should be looking at your road signs all the time, particularly when at junctions, because that's when most speed limits will change, either when you approach a junction or traffic light or a roundabout, or after you've turned a traffic light around about a junction. So, go back and watch the video again if you didn't see it. The speed limit is now 40. Really important to know, if you still think it's 30 here, you'll be far too slow for the road. Now, the speedometer on the dash camera is saying the candidate is doing just under 30 miles an hour. It doesn't feel like that though, it feels a bit faster than that, so perhaps that's not fully accurate. And the candidate didn't give any driver faults, so I'm guessing here it looks like the candidate is certainly doing over 30. Here he should be doing really 35 to 40. It's a clear road, no hazards, nice and straight, road's quite wide, so you should be driving somewhere near the speed limit on this sort of situation. A couple of road signs there for a junction on the right and traffic queues as well. There could be some traffic lights coming up or a busy junction causing the traffic queue potentially at busier times of the day. So looking far ahead, we can start to see some more houses coming up, and there's actually going to be a speed limit change down to 30. So check your mirrors before we slow, and get into 30 before we reach the sign. We're then taking the next road on the right, so mirrors and signal right, and into the turning box. Then looking for any oncoming traffic, a couple of give way to, so we'll just pause for them and let them go. While we're doing this, we can look into the new road, Notice the speed limit is going to be 20 as we turn in. It's a bit hard to see of the signs, but you might have seen it on the road markings. A couple of parked vehicles here. No one can vehicles there to give way to, so we can just proceed through. As there's parked vehicles on both sides, there's no set priority. You just need to decide between you and the oncoming vehicle who's going to go through first. So looking at our road signs, we have a give way. And in fact, it's going to be a stop sign, and we're turning right here. So mirrors and signal right. And the candidate actually stops a bit early, and quite harshly as well. So they get given a fault here for use of foot brake. Now they edge forward though and re-stop at the stop line. Really good idea that. As remember, if we stop too early, we can't see. We need to be at the line at the stop sign, not a metre from it. Now it's still very hard to see, hence why there's a stop line there. So we just keep edging forwards to see if it's safe to go. The candidate does struggle a bit with this. 
It's because they're not quite using their feet control properly. They've got their foot on the brake while using the clutch and it just doesn't really work. The car struggles. You should be using your gas and your clutch to control the car when doing a hill start. But the candidate does get away with it and manage to sort themselves out. And as you'll no doubt see, the examiner has asked the candidate to pull up on left just before this parked vehicle, leaving enough room to pull away again, about a car length away from them. So the candidate's done their mirror checks and signalled, they pulled over, they've now put the handbrake on, put it in neutral, cancelled signal, and the examiner is now going to ask them to drive on when it's safe to. It's a bit hard to see ahead here due to the parked vehicle, so important here we pull up slowly and have a signal on. So we're just ready to stop if something comes towards us at the last moment. So edge out nice and slowly. Good idea there, just to pause for that van, because they're, they're coming our way, they are. So really good idea to pause there. But that just shows the importance of edging out slowly when you're behind a parked vehicle. It's all clear to go now though. Remember, the speed limit is 20 miles per hour here. So don't let this hill here make the car run away from you. Keep control of your speed, ease off the gas, potentially use the brake. We're then going to be taking the next road on the left. It comes up just around this corner. So mirrors and signal left. And coming into the corner quite slowly. As we don't know what's around the corner, it's a residential area. It's likely to be parked vehicles like this around the corner in a residential area. Also keep scanning the sides here. Maybe there's things between the parked vehicles, such as children or people and adults trying to cross the road. Or maybe animals under the cars. Maybe one of the cars might pull away. This is why it's a 20 in this area, why we've got these regular speed bumps, to keep people's speed under control for all these potential hazards. Even got the postman there on the right. So there's going to be a postman somewhere around here. He might be walking across the road to deliver their letters. So looking in the far distance, we can see some buildings directly in front of us. This is quite a strong hint. There's probably a T-junction there, as we can't go ahead anymore. You can also see the way the parked vehicles are now facing the other way. At the T-junction, we're going to be turning left. So mirrors and signal left, and they're going to approach you this with quite a lot of caution. It's very hard to see due to the parked vehicles. So you need to make sure here we edge out very slowly, being very ready to stop if something appears at the last moment. So there's the vehicle that the candidate was waiting for. Looks like there's a few coming. So keep edging forwards. Is it safe? Yep, it looks safe now. Got some traffic lights coming up. So checking our mirrors. Are the lights going to change? They could do. If it's green, it's only going to change at some point. So be ready. Now here, you just need to continue following the road ahead. You can't go round to the right as that's no entry. So an examiner wouldn't tell you where to go there. You need to read the road signs and work it out for yourself. Now similar here, we're not being told where to go, so which way do we go? We're following the road ahead, so looking at the road markings, it's the middle lane. Light's still on green, and we're committed. Got some parked vehicles coming up here on the left hand side. Just be ready to give way in case a large vehicle comes. You'll fit off a car here, but not if it's a large bus coming round the corner or a lorry. More parked vehicles here. Couple of oncoming vehicles. It's quite narrow here. The road's quite narrow here, so the candidate does well to slow a bit and hold to decent positioning with the oncoming vehicles. It can be easy to get scared of the oncoming vehicles and then drift too far left, which could cause a problem by hitting the grass verge. Now, speed limit's still 30 here, and it's starting to go downhill. We can see the way the road starts to disappear from us. So, control that seat, come off that gas, potentially consider having your foot over the brake pedal, even using the brake if needed. Keep checking that speedometer. Don't let the hill take control of the car. You're in control of the car, not the hill. Come around the next corner, keep anticipating what hazards you might have. It's a built up area. You might have parked vehicles, pedestrians crossing. So here's a parked vehicle. So check our mirrors. It looks safe to go round. Clear of oncoming traffic. Some more parked vehicles up here. Again, the vehicles on both sides. So no set priority here. It's just going to be down to you and the oncoming driver to decide who's going to go through first. At the end of the road, we're turning left. And then left again. 
So mirrors and signal. Now this is a bit of a busier road here. So you need to make sure we're observing carefully and waiting patiently for it to be safe to go, like the vehicle in front. So making sure we get fully up to the giveaway line so we can see properly. And then we have to edge out a bit here because it's quite hard to see. And then we're turning left immediately again. Some parked vehicles on the right here, but even though it's our priority, that doesn't mean everyone's going to give you priority. So you always need to be ready, just in case someone doesn't do what they're supposed to do. The road's bending around to the right here, and there's supposed to be a parked vehicle. Uh, again on the right here. So again, expecting an oncoming vehicle to come around, just in case they don't give way to you. All looks clear at the moment, so we continue to proceed. And there's a parked vehicle on the other side of the road now. So checking mirrors, coming off the gas a little bit, being ready to give way. Looks safe to go though. And no one to give way to there as well. Just being ready here again to slow and to pull into the left if needed if an oncoming vehicle comes. At the end of the road, we're going to be turning left. So mirrors and signal left. Now there are parked vehicles on the new road, and that's going to force any vehicles coming from the left to be on the wrong side of the road. And we're at the giveaway lines, so we need to give way to them. So when they come to this junction, there's a vehicle on the left, and we need to give way to them. If a candidate fails to give way, they're given a driver fault for junction observations. If that vehicle is coming faster from the left, the examiner would have to step in and use the dual controls to avoid a collision. So if you come up to a T-junction and there's a parked vehicle on the new road, you need to apply extra caution and be prepared to give way to traffic coming in both directions as you're at the giveaway lines. It's not just giving way to the traffic on the right. We've got a parked vehicle on the left here. We need to give way to the oncoming vehicle. The candidate doesn't, and causes the oncoming vehicle to slow a bit. But the road's just about wide enough for two. But they should have given way. So they get away with just a driver fault here for meeting. If the road is narrower, that would have been an immediate fail. The width of the road just about saved them. The examiner now asks the candidate to pull up on the left. And when doing so, the candidate does mount the curb briefly. But the examiner decides to give them the benefit of the doubt and marks no fault for this. The examiner now asks the candidate to pull forward and stop next to the parked vehicle on the left in the distance and then reverse park to do a parallel park. We've checked our mirrors, we checked our blind spot, we're going to signal right if the candidate prefers to signal than not to signal, even though it's not compulsory if there's no one around. And we're going to look to pull away when it's safe to. So off we go. So, it's the next parked vehicle on the left hand side. So checking mirrors again, checking ahead to see if it's clear, it be an oncoming vehicle, so the candidate does well to hold back here and give way to them. So after them it looks now clear to go, so we're going to recheck mirrors, and if it's safe to, go round and look to stop next to this parked vehicle. So we can check mirrors, we can signal left if we want to, but at the moment there's definitely no one to benefit. And then we're looking to stop just next to the parked vehicle with the car straight and the wheel straight. So we're now selecting reverse gear to show the reverse lights so if no one turns up they understand why we stopped in the middle of the road. We're about to do a par parallel park. Now there is an oncoming vehicle here. The candidate doesn't notice it and starts steering in and swings out the front of the car and blocks the oncoming vehicle from going past. This is given as a serious fault for reversing observations. The candidate needs to notice them and stop with the car straight and let them pass. By swinging in They've actually now blocked the road and are holding them up unnecessarily. Despite this, the candidate does well to not get flustered. They take their time to think through what they need to do and not to rush it. They get the car to a good angle so it's not coming in too tightly and too sharply. And the speed is really well controlled so they have plenty of time to observe to make sure it's safe and then time to judge when they get near the curb, which they judge really well. So they swing the front in now. And when the car's parallel from the curb and straight, they straighten the wheel. So in terms of the control of the parking, it was excellent. Really good control of the steering to get the car parked well, and really good control of the speed. It's just unfortunate the observations weren't there. They were checking, but they didn't notice. They weren't checking carefully enough and didn't notice the oncoming vehicle. The candidate now gets asked to drive on when it's safe to. And when they're looking to pull away here, they rush their pulling away. They don't notice the white vehicle coming up behind them. 
and they actually keep edging forwards and not knowing what to do, well, all they need to do is just stop and let the vehicle behind go past them. Because the vehicle behind has priority, this white one. But they end up pulling out in front of them. And that's now given as a serious fault for move off safety. We need just to stop and let that white vehicle go. Because they have priority. After the test, the candidate told me they didn't know what to do about that vehicle behind, that white learner vehicle. As they were coming up quite slowly and cautiously and they seemed unsure that they have a learner vehicle. What I stressed the candidate did was just put a left signal on, apply your foot brake to show the brake lights and just sit there for a few more moments to tell that learner vehicle you're parked and you're not going to pull out in front of them, they just need to steer around you. At the crossroads we're turning left, so as it's a crossroads, as I was looking left and right, make sure you're looking ahead, there could be traffic coming out from there. If the traffic's coming from ahead and they're going to come your way and they're going to cross your path, there's no set priority. It's much like the meeting situations with parked vehicles on both sides. You need to make eye contact with the other driver and then decide between you who's going to go first. General rule of thumb, if they move, you stop. If they stop, you move, assuming that it's clear on the main road. So once again, the candidate gets asked to pull up on the left. So mirrors and signal left, because there is oncoming vehicles to benefit. Good cho choice of place to stop here. Handbrake on, into neutral. Thanks for that, says the examiner. Please drive on when you're ready. So now let's see if it's safe to go. It's quite a busy road, so not going to rush or pulling away too much, and a car could come, we miss it. So a couple of vehicles to give way to behind us. Looks like it's going to be safe to go now. So mirrors, signal, and right hand blind spot, and off we go. Now the road's starting to go uphill here, and what goes up must come down. So now it's starting to go downhill. So we've got to make sure we control our speed again. There's quite a lot of this around the Red Hill area. I suppose the clue's in the name, Red Hill. There's quite a lot of hills. So you need to be able to control your speed on the hills, not let it run away from you going down these hills. The candidate does well to do that, and keeps within the speed limit, which is currently 30 miles per hour. More parked vehicles here, again, on both sides of the road. So no set priority. It's just going to be a judgement call between you and the oncoming vehicle. If they're slowing, you keep going. If they keep going, you start slowing and stop if needed. So, all looking good here. The oncoming vehicles are all holding back. All looking clear here though. So we're going to continue through. Just again being aware of what might be between the park vehicles. Pedestrians, the vehicles might pull away. Could be animals underneath the vehicles. Come around the next corner. Again, more park vehicles. Be ready to stop and hold back. Even like for this guy who doing something with his tyre, or is he cleaning the car? There's sort of hazards you're going to come across in urban areas. Hence why there's lower speed limits, of course. So, all looking clear here. But just being ready for something to come fast round the corner in the distance. If they're coming fast, they might not give way to you. So remember, don't assume priority. Just because you've got priority doesn't mean you're going to get it. The candidate now gets asked to find a safe place to pull up on the left. So we're going to check our mirrors. There's no one to signal to and no one ahead to signal to. But again, the candidate decides to signal as they just have to do it if you're not sure. And they just edge forward a bit just to get themselves in a better position from the curb. As they're not stopped too near the driveways or over the driveways, I should say. So good position to stop there, handbrake on, into neutral, and wait for further instructions from the examiner. Thanks for that, says the examiner. Please drive on when you're ready. So we're going to check our mirrors, see if it's safe. And then checking our blind spot, signalling right, and off we go. At the end of the road, we're turning right. Notice the speed limit is going to 40 miles per hour here. So a bit more care and attention needed here. Now a little bit sharp on the brake there. I think maybe the candidate is surprised by the speed of the traffic coming. So the candidate does get given there a driver fault for use of foot brake. Again, just a bit harsh on the foot brake. You need to be more gentle and be more prepared to stop so it's not just a last minute press to the brake of suddenly seeing a vehicle coming. Remember the speed limit here is 40 miles per hour. 
And again, the road looks very clear. You can see ahead from quite far. It's quite a wide road. There's not really any hazards. It's just a field to the side of us. So it's not likely something's going to suddenly change. So on this road, should we get near the speed limit? At least 35 towards 40 miles per hour. Again, the speed limit on the dash camera shows near a sort of 30. It does look faster than 30. And no faults given. So perhaps it's just a slightly inaccurate speed on the, on the dash camera. If they were doing 30, I would highly expect them to get a driver fault. Now looking far ahead, we can start to see some road signs. The speed limit is changing back to 30 miles per hour. So making sure we've checked mirrors and slow to 30 before we reach the sign. Pedestrian crossing, and there are pedestrians approaching from the left. But we're going to be at the crossing well before them, so they shouldn't press the button But by the time we get there. So no problem. At the roundabout, we're turning left, first exit. So we're going to scan to the right early and slow to see if it's safe to keep going. The vehicle on the right is turning left, so they're not going to affect us. So it's safe to keep going. It's good planning there from the candidate. And remember, the speed limit is now 30 miles per hour. So keep checking that speedometer to stay within your speed limit. This is one of those roads where it's easy to go over the speed limit if you're not paying attention. As ahead, it looks quite clear and straight. But there's a 30 here for a reason. I suspect because there's a footpath on the left hand side and some woodlands there. So there's houses on the right, so I suspect it quite often gets busy with people crossing the road going for a walk in the woods. Like see some dog walkers there. Speed limit going to 40 here. Wait till we pass the sign, then check our mirrors for anyone overtaking, and if it's safe to, we're going to build speed. On this road, again, it's all very clear and straight, so we should be getting to the speed limit doing about 35 to 40 miles per hour here. We have a car park on our left here. Just be aware of any vehicles pulling into or pulling out of the car park. All look clear at the moment. And scanning our road signs, we've got a sign for a migratory toad crossing. So sometimes during the year, there could be toads crossing the road. Keep scanning the road for any warning signs. Or looking for any hazards. It all looks clear at the moment. There's no activity on the footpath. Again, still looks all quite clear. Just keep scanning though. Keep your focus. Keep your concentration. Don't fall asleep just because it's a straight road. Could even be potholes potentially during this sort of weather in this time of year because this is filmed in December. And we've got some signs here for a sharp right hand bend. And the candidate has been asked to take the next road on the left. So mirrors and signal left. And as we turn into the road, look for the speed limit change. It's now 30 miles per hour. So keep looking out for any parked vehicles or pedestrians because we're on a 30 mile an hour road. There's even a bus stop on the right hand side there, so there could be buses using this road as it's a bus route. So keep scanning around, looks clear ahead at the moment. There is a junction on the right though, but that looks all clear. Some parked vehicles on the right, is there anyone going to overtake them and cause us to slow? Looks good at the moment. If we're coming up to a crossroads, we're going to be following the road ahead. It's slightly staggered, let's go left first and then right, but no signals required as it's not staggered too severely. Again, keeping a good distance from the vehicle in front here, so we can see the tyres. Lights now change into green, so off we go. So remember, no signal needed. We just need to go round to the left a bit to start with, and then round to the right down here. As we go to the new road, there's no speed limit changes, so it's still 30 miles per hour. There's someone waiting at the bus stop, so again, bear in mind, it's a bus route. Is there a bus going to come round the corner? We've got a two-way traffic sign. And there's a tunnel coming up. Shouldn't affect us too much though, so it's quite a large tunnel. If it's a smaller one, we have to expect large vehicles might be in the middle of the road. But like I say, not for this one, it's very large. Have a roundabout here. At the roundabout, we're going to be turning right, the third exit. So mirrors and signal right. Scan the roundabout early. Is it safe to keep going? Yep, that vehicle's turning off, so off we go. Keep close to the roundabout. And as we pass the second exit, we'll do our mirrors and signal to exit. No speed limit changes again, so the speed limit is still 30 miles per hour. We've been driving for about half an hour, so we're coming to the north towards the end of the test. This is the important bit, where you keep your focus and don't switch off. Many people lose their focus towards the end because they know the test is about to finish. You can't be thinking like you've got focus on the driving of what you're doing. So keep scanning the head, keep seeing what might happen. Maybe there's going to be a broken down vehicle on the road or a cyclist you're going to have to deal with. It's all clear ahead here though, so we can stick to about 30 miles per hour. Got a warning sign for a right hand bend. 
but at this speed it's not going to be too severe. The oncoming vehicle might go wide around the puddle. Yep, a little bit, so that's going to affect us a bit. Let's come around this bend. Are there any hazards? The road appears to be clear. There could have been parked vehicles on this road though, because there's houses there. Or it could be people crossing the road. Or possibly a bus stops because it is a part of a bus route. So keep checking that speedometer. Staying within 30 miles per hour. And looking far up, the road is now going to be bending round to the left. You can see now a sign here warning us of that. But again, not going to affect us too much as it, we're already at quite a slow speed anyway. As we go past the houses, this is when it may feel like it's no longer a 30 mile an hour road. But it is. There's been no signs changing it. I appreciate we're no longer in a residential area, but if the speed limit's going to change, it will tell you. So the speed limit remains at 30 miles per hour. We're then going to be taking the next road on the left. When we turn in, we're going to check for any speed limit changes. So I'll do our mirrors and signal. See the turn coming up just on this bend. The oncoming vehicle's waiting for us, so that's fine. So we turn into the road. Any speed limit changes? Scanning all around, and one on the left hand side here. The speed limit is now 40 miles per hour. Of course, bear in mind again, 40 miles an hour is not a target, you have to drive to the appropriate speed. This road is a bit narrower than the ones we've had before, and also it's quite bendy, so it's not really possible to do 40 at any point in this road. But sometimes you can do 30, maybe 35. Sometimes though, you might need to do 20 or 15 for some of the bends, because some of them are quite sharp, just like the one we just had there. Bend here is a particularly sharp one, probably need to do here about 20 miles an hour or so. If you want some advice for how to judge the speed on these sorts of roads and on the bends on these country roads, I suggest you check out the video I made about limit points and choosing the appropriate speed and making progress on rural roads. Now earlier on there was a parked van around this corner on the opposite side of the road, a van doing some roadworks. Looks like it's gone now though, so that's not affecting us anymore, but perhaps it'd be further around the corner or something. So just always be aware. Looks all clear at the moment though, looks good. And we're then going to be turning right soon back into the test centre. There's a sharp left hand bend and the test centre is on the right of that bend. So we need to be very very cautious and pause before we turn in because we don't know what's going to come around this left hand bend. So checking mirrors and signalling right, and slowing right down to a crawl, and almost fully stopping. Just keep slowing that speed to a crawl, be ready to stop as something happens, and then committing to the turn. As we come in, lots of speed bumps. We've got to keep our speed slow here, as there's a car park. If these cars could reverse out, there's likely to be a lot of pedestrian activity. We've also got this zebra crossing. It's one of the last things you'll do on your tests in Red Hill. You don't want to come to zebra crossing, lose your focus, and then fail to give way to someone who's looking to cross, and then you fail your test right at the end because you didn't give way to someone at the zebra crossing. We're then going to be turning right here into the test centre bays. And then once we turn right, we'll turn right immediately again. And once we turn right immediately again here, the test centre bays are all the bays on the right hand side. So the examiner's just going to ask the candidate just to drive forwards into a parking bay. If they came around this corner, they should have been keeping tight to the left-hand side. That would give them much more room to drive forwards into a bay on the right here. Because they weren't pulled over to the left far enough, when they pull in, they end up at an angle and not in the bay properly. No fault is given here though, as the candidate has already done their manoeuvre, the parallel park. The examiner now gives the candidate the result, and unfortunately haven't passed. One serious fault, observations on the reversing on the parallel park and one serious fault for move-off safety after the parallel park, and then four driver faults. The examiner says it's a decent drive. Just unfortunate, the observations weren't there on the parallel parking. Mm -hmm. 